Hello, my name is Rachel Wolf, an attorney with Wolf, Williams and Austin, and our firm is proud to sponsor this wonderful documentary, Commercial Free, about the life and career of Johnny Wood and his tenure at WCYB. For over 40 years, Johnny Wood joined us every morning as a trusted news source while also bringing a certain comfort, warmth, and humor into our homes while reporting the news, sports, and weather. Johnny painted a vivid picture of what was happening in both the Tri-Cities and Southwest Virginia and helped us stay informed of what was happening in our neighborhoods. Whether it was covering the upcoming race at Bristol Motor Speedway, sharing his famous fishing report, or informing us as children of a much anticipated snow day, Johnny was a familiar and trusted voice and he remains an icon in both the Tri-Cities and Southwest Virginia. He retired from WCUIB in 2012 after 40 years of bringing us the news. Now, 12 years later, we once again invite him into our homes to honor him in this great documentary about his life and career. Please join us in honoring Johnny Wood and his years of exceptional service to the broadcast news industry by joining us for this documentary, Good Morning, I'm Johnny Wood. one point, I think we were the top-rated small market television newscast in the country. We are right here in the middle of the, two of the giants of racing and wrestling. And he was one of us. Driver of the funny car and the undertaker of the WWF. Johnny was just laid back and presented it into a way that related to the people here in southwest Virginia and northeast Tennessee. They're getting up out of their seat to watch Oh yeah. He was real. He was authentic. Highs today in the 50s, tomorrow's highs in the 60s. Johnny was a one-man band. You know, he did the news, he did the weather, he did sports. Same one. This is a lot of fun. It's a fun business. But when it's time to get serious and cover hard news, nobody does it better. <laughs> I know, as soon as they roll the cameras, Johnny's like, I'm on point. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Johnny would just say the funniest things sometimes about seeing eye ducks on his car and comparing the rain to different types of Christian denominational baptisms. We have a high pressure system that settled down here in the southern part of the country. I want to speak a little of that southern ease and pronounce their R's and G's. Look at, look at Dave, John. Johnny Wood, you know, is Johnny Wood on television or he's the same on, in person or out in the community. Sorry. John looks like he'd eat, eat for salmon. And then folks love to come up and say, I saw Johnny here, I saw Johnny there. They'll tell me stories of when they met Johnny Wood. From the time I started working, when I'd go out into the community, they wouldn't say, hello, Teresa. They would say, hello, Teresa, how's Johnny doing? But the funniest thing about the Johnny Wood phenomena, Woods, Woods, they think his name is Johnny Woods. How can you be the most famous guy in the history of Tri-Cities Television and half the people don't know your real name? He was always true to himself, a true journalist, and Johnny is a unique, one-of-a-kind news anchor. 
Well, good morning, and good morning, and good morning, and good morning. Uh, good morning, I'm Johnny Wood. It was calculus and math that got me into broadcasting, actually. Well, I was born in Johnson City, 1942. I grew up at, in Johnson City, went to high school at Science Hill, ahead of Steve Spurrier. He was just a snotty-nosed kid then. <laughs> and I went to East Tennessee State. I encountered calculus in my third semester of college. I was a pre-engineering major and taking a five-hour math course. And we had started to get into calculus and I just, it just totally blindsided me. I just could not comprehend it. And Dr. Uh, Tom Carson called me in his office. He was the head of the math department. Says, Mr. Wood, I don't think you're going to be a success in this program. I suggest you change majors quickly. I uh, had some knowledge of radio and a fraternity brother of mine was manager of the campus radio station. He said, well, you know, you got a pretty good voice. Maybe you ought to audition. And so I did. And that's how I ended up in, in broadcasting. It was calculus that did it. I loved radio when radio was really big. And now here's that boy with a smile and a song. The star of the show, Curly Kid. Thank you, Bill Lane and Howdy folks, and welcome to the Fritz Show. To get us rolling on our way this afternoon, we have a final... These people were these godlike personalities. At Richmond, Virginia, a bulletin. A Richmond judge struck down Virginia's movie censorship law today as an invalid previous restraint of freedom of expression. Shall I go on? Started in radio, I think, in about 63. I was started at uh, WOPI. It was the oldest station in the market. It was went on the air in 1929. Says Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee, a good place to live. And believe me, I think every one of us here in Bristol do feel that on this 4th of July, the birthday of independence. Went to work for WCYB in 65 or 66. I got some great advice from the late Bob Porterfield, and it was not advice to me. He and Walter Crockett, our uh, news director, had Mr. Porterfield to come down and speak to Art and Merrill and Evelyn Boer, one of the early, early women anchors that was just unheard of back then, talk to them about being on television and being in front of people is basically what he was doing. Well, I was the, the kid over at radio. I was still working radio, but I would come over and record station breaks. Radio was across the street uh, and the top floor of the hotel building there, which is uh, now a hotel again. And we had a big reel-to-reel -reel machine, and I would go through the log, and, and I would read voiceovers and hundreds of Channel 5, Bristol Kingsport, Johnson City. And he was there speaking to them, and he says, you know, there was already a Walter Cronkite and a David Brinkley and Chet Huntley. You're not going to be any of those people. Just be yourself. So I took that advice and I was decided, well, I'll just be Johnny Wood. And I was Johnny Wood for 44 years there. Clouds to the west of us, a lot of heavy storm activity, seven week long strike going on in Virginia against the Pittston Coal Group. And Tennessee High uh, finally got to play Sullivan East and Tennessee High won that game three to one in the Tennessee District One AAA tournament uh, last night. Willard, like most people in the northeastern United States, referred to our mountains as Appalachians. I hate to say that. And, you know, it really got under all of our skins. And one of our great viewers, I don't know who it was, Willard uh, appeared here uh, in our area for a fun fest event and honored John Palmer who is from Kingsport, and his uh, drama teacher. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. I can see her face. But anyway, this viewer pitched an apple, and uh, Willard, of course, caught it and looked at it. And the guy says, Appalachia. That's the name of the mountains, Appalachia. And from that moment on, every time Willard Scott mentioned our mountains, he always called it Appalachian.
WCYB, Bristol Kingsport, Johnson City. Good morning. This is WCYB TV, Channel 5 in Bristol. Serving Bristol, Kingsport, Johnson City, and the five state area. WCYB TV studios and general offices are at Cumberland and Lee Streets, Bristol, Virginia. People were watching Johnny. I remember going on a fishing trip in 1980 to almost Charlotte, North Carolina, and a guy had a cabin down there and he could watch Johnny Wood. He would watch Johnny Wood's forecast at Lake Norman. I mean, that's, that's a long ways away. Piedmont section of North Carolina where they really need some rain. It was all key to where they, the first guys that started the station, you know, put that transmitter there. The transmitter is located at Rye Patch Knob on Holston Mountain in Cherokee National Forest with the antenna 2,230 feet above average terrain. That gave you the most reach. Robert Smith, the engineer, he figured out that was the best signal in the five state area. WCYB TV is signing on with a color bar test pattern. The color bars from left to right are white, yellow, cyan, green, magenta, red, and blue. The TV station went on air in August of 1956. The original logo actually had significant meaning to the, the region. North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And that's why they chose the, the numeral five. And back then, the lower you were on the dial, the farther your signal went. On top of the five state, states, Pentagon was three mountains. And that represented Bristol, Kingsport, Johnson City. New Center 5 is next on WCYB TV 5, the news station. People just grew up, you know, watching Johnny, and we always used to kid. It was just like Channel 5 was soldered on the, you know, in the old television, you'd have a dial, you had to twist to change the channel, but it was just soldered to Channel 5. You couldn't change it, you know, back in the day, because everybody watched Channel 5. When their contract expires at the end of next season, Waltrip says he plans to form his own team in the year 1987. I should have sold stuff or something, I guess. <laughs> I could have made a fortune, I suppose, but... Johnny started out doing sports, and so Johnny would come out and film our uh, baseball, football, basketball games. Sports is fun to cover back then. I got to cover uh, a state champion several times in football. Tennessee High's great team of 72, Coach John Crop, and they have, I noticed they've had some reunions that uh, I thought, oh, those folks have gotten old, you know? But then again, that was a number of years ago. <laughs> I guess, I, I guess I've aged a little, too. You know, the uh, spring equinox comes up tomorrow. I believe it's at 5.56, and I heard that you can take an egg and uh, balance it on the tip of the sharp part, you know. And it'll stand and up. And it'll stand up at that time, 5.56 tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, we'll it's going to rain. We'll try that in the midst of the rain tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. When I started working with Johnny, he was kind of known as the weather guy with the school closings and the fishing reports and he had this identity where he'd kind of stumble over his words and maybe even emphasize that. But that just made him more real to people. Well, good afternoon. I'm Tara Taylor. Uh, I'm Johnny Wood. Tara Taylor has uh, another day off, and I've been up way too long this morning. That's the uh, news wrap-ups, and uh, what, what do we usually say on that? And that's the news, yeah. Sorry about that. Don't tell me, I can't even say my name. Well, it looks like a beautiful day out there today. Guess what happened this morning? I give up. About an hour and oh, a half Oh, I know, ago. I know, spring. Spring sprung, and it's gonna spring a leak and rain on us tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. He knew the people. He knew how to talk to the people. When he presented the news, it was like he was talking to, to them. People caught on to that, and they realized that uh, uh, he's just one of us. People at home said, well, yeah, that guy, he just relaxed. He was also fun and funny, but the other thing you had to know about Johnny was that he was a fierce defender of news 
journalism and of the ethical standards. Yeah, I, I consider that a, a real responsibility, uh, particularly uh, actually when I got into morning television. Also in the minds of uh, miners yesterday as uh, they gathered in Dickinson County, Virginia to commemorate the sixth anniversary of the explosion that killed seven at the uh, McClure number one mine in 1983. Johnny was really old school. He didn't really use a teleprompter very much. He'd go by notes and, and he, would, he always wanted scripts. We've got 41 degrees cloudy skies uh, outside right now. The weather scan outlook calls for some more clouds today. You know, of course, Johnny like to always have his scripts. Rightfully so, because if you don't have your script and the teleprompter messes up, then you have nowhere to go with that. Well, good morning. Uh, we have uh, fair to uh, partly cloudy skies this morning, but looking for some clouds uh, to develop sometime today. There it is. Uh, drop the thing either. We've persevered through some pretty rough mornings. This is News Center 5 this morning. I know the boss would come in and, hey, Johnny, how's it going? I said, if you'd been in here, Bob, I would have quit. <laughs> so well, I'm glad I didn't come in. Morning. Closer look at the surface conditions the last hour. And uh, we'll just forget that map there because uh, obviously, uh, well, we'll hit the button again and see what happens. Hey, we're getting a real color light show here today. I kind of stole radio's audience. We had a terrible winter, just snow after snow after snow. And so I started running school closings. I, I did my radio shtick on TV. That school system is operating on a one hour delay. You would watch Johnny to see if school was gonna be out the next day when it snowed. Growing up, if you wanted to find out if you went to school, if it had snowed, you would watch Johnny to see if he read off your name of your school system. That's the way a lot of people found out whether or not they had to go to school or not, I guess. I was a real popular guy when it snowed. Well, good morning, all my friends and acquaintances that stop and say, hey, when's it gonna snow? Okay, it snowed. <laughs> It is a tricky place to forecast the weather. And, and while we don't get a ton of extreme weather, people do come to rely on the forecast when, when things get you know, pretty bad. So there's some hallmark we you know, weather events. And so we built up a, an audience pretty quickly. WCYB was a powerhouse in Southwest Virginia. You can't live in Southwest Virginia and not know who Johnny Wood is. He really just was a perfect man for that job at that time to just come into the people's living rooms and share. I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. So that's what I would do, try to tell somebody what the weather was, what they needed to do for that day as far as getting out, whether their ball team won or lost last night, and whatever happened uh, that would be the topic of their morning coffee at work or something, and that's what I strove to do. I think everybody has their own Johnny memory and uh, one of mine goes back to when I was young. It was a cold night before, we were hoping for snow and we'd get up early and you would see Johnny on the, on the news and he was listing all the schools out and you were just begging, please Johnny, please call our school. We wanna be out for the day, we go sleigh riding. And I can always just remember sitting there watching him and just kind of waiting for our name to be called and uh, just lots of great memories and thank you for everything, Johnny. The news is more than just faces. It's experience and equipment of a television news organization that enables it to pursue, photograph, and write a story that is factual, concise, and understandable. That's why you can depend on the Channel 5 News Team at 1, 6, and 11. The best. Merrill and I, I used to kid him, and you know, says, I used to listen to you on the radio when I was a kid. Merrill said, well, I was a kid then too. You know, he started out on radio. The move to television followed several years in radio at WETB in Johnson City, 
interrupted by a stint in the Army. Walking in that first day was, uh, to use a modern term, awesome. I was somewhat overwhelmed by what was going on. I got to work with Merrill when I transitioned over to television. He helped me so much. Taught me to shoot film and maintaining contact with the camera. All this seemingly little stuff. His, his roots are in this area, his folks and their folks. For that reason, we uh, both have stayed here all these years, and this is a wonderful place to be, and it's hard to find any other place any better, I guess. And that was a conclusion I have come to, and I think Merrill drew that conclusion many years before I did. This is News Center 5 at 6. Good evening. Yet another blast of bad weather hits our region. This is a new Center 5 update. Guilty of two counts of attempted first-degree murder. Okay, that's it for this edition of New Center 5, and we have The Tonight Show next. And I'm sure you all got a lot of stories to tell, right? Oh, yeah, but we're not going to go into a lot of those, believe me. That's for sure. Tonight's in-depth feels a bit odd for me since it's about me. And now, 38 years later, Merrill is thinking about the next phase of his life, retirement. Merrill has spent a great number of great years, uh, and a number, a great number of those years too, a large number, and just wanted to say thank you for everything and, and good luck. President Ford is one highlight. I was in the crew that covered the landing. He was here with Congressman Jimmy Quillen when Mr. Quillen joined hands with the top Democrat in the state, Ned McWhorter, to bring the med school to East Tennessee State University. But anyway, Mr. Ford, he landed and they all deplaned and we weren't expecting any statements to be done at the airport. And here Ron Nesson, the press secretary, came out and says, uh, President Ford will entertain a few questions. And they set up a mic and we were all photographers. I knew he was there for the med school, so I asked him about that. We made the network with the, with the med school <laughs> that night. Johnny loved sports and he loved NASCAR. Well, I, I covered sports too. And people like Richard Petty, very personable guy, always available for interview, who uh, recognized at an early age the value of the media long before anybody else did. I like to fish a lot. I think that's pretty well known too. I had a bunch of fishing gear in my Volkswagen wagon and I was going to interview Richard at one of the races and he said don't you do anything else besides fish the waders were still wet and I saw him a, a year later and he didn't remember my name but it says you're that guy that fishes a lot <laughs> I thought that was pretty astute of him to remember that Now, Johnny Wood, veteran News Center 5 news anchor and weather forecaster, has an important request for you. Hey, let's do lunch. Today, Johnny's at the Red Pig in Johnson City. Now, we certainly are right here at the, the busiest place in, in Johnson City, the Red Pig. They feature all kinds of wonderful sandwiches and, and meals. Jalapeno coleslaw, porterhouse pork chops, and the list goes on and on and on. And it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know. Boy, are you kidding, Amy? I'd be here for, it'd be a career to try everything on this menu here. Went to one up in uh, Clintwood, Virginia, I think, and the whole town, I mean, the courthouse even shut down. And, uh, really looking forward to sampling what's on the menu here. It's, it's all good cafe, but all kinds of uh, good looking, good tasting food here. Uh, we're pretty close to Clintwood High School. Got the Clintwood football team here with us today. We got the mayor here with us today. To we do, football and coaches. There's the big burger. I think that's what's on my menu for this afternoon. I was signing autographs in the local paper there. Actually, it was Cofield Progress. Did a story with my wife, Mary, because I was too busy signing autographs. Posed for a lot of pictures, too. <laughs> We certainly have enjoyed it. It's the uh, it's all good cafe, and what I sampled, uh, I can certainly attest to that. Well, I, I felt it was my responsibility to give back. I had generated some pretty, pretty significant ratings, and I know enough about the business to know how important that is. My shows stayed sold out. I didn't get paid any extra, I guess, but. I 
need to give it a try here. We're at the corner of State and 7th Street. We we are so excited, Johnny, to be a part of this. We'll do anything. We just like to provide service to people. You better come here hungry because I'll tell you, you'll be full when you leave. If you don't, it's your own fault. Viewers also loved his noon segment, Lunch with Johnny. It was a huge hit, and his weekly fishing reports became a staple of his morning newscast. This spring-like weather has a lot of people out fishing. Well, we started doing that, and I was trying to hold on to that audience that we developed in the winter. Well, the weather is here, and so is the fishing. Tennessee Valley Authority continues its moderate generating schedules at the Watauga and South Holston dams. And I'd done the, a kind of a very informal fishing report of what was hitting, what was biting where. From my radio days, just something to fill the time in. There is some dry fly action on some streams with the larger royal wolf and elk wing caddis patterns. We're talking 12 to 14s there. You can really see those pretty well. Uh, bass fishing is really turning on on most of the area lakes with small crankbaits, suspended jerk baits, and spinner baits working pretty well. And lo and behold, uh, people liked it and I got quite a response and to this day I see people that you know would send me pictures that hey you showed that picture of that big bass I caught you know and this is a picture of Ashley Phillips with her very first fish she caught this carp at the Clear Creek Golf Course uh, pond there in Bristol Virginia I see that Joe Wolf is one of the sponsors of, of this event today Joe is such a fine man. He's represented and still representing uh, the coal miners. And he uh, wanted to have a bass fishing tournament up in uh, Wise County. And they had it on Cherokee Lake and had a pretty good turnout. And uh, he asked me to be the, the name. And I graciously agreed, you know, because while he was representing coal miners, I guess I was representing bass fishermen. Anyhow, he uh, sent me the proceeds, which was $2,000 for the charity of my choice. I said, well, make the check out to the Bristol Faith in Action. So one day I just had a few minutes and I just had the check and I certainly wanted to get it to the proper people. So I went out there and they were in the middle of a board meeting and they were worried about their budget being about $1,700 short for that month. It was getting close to Christmas, and they had a lot of demands. I felt like Santa Claus that day. It solved their budget problem f for that month, and uh, it was one of the, the greatest <laughs> moments I was ever involved with, and all I was was the delivery boy, or as I referred to myself, as I felt like Santa Claus that day. Johnny, I can't believe you've been doing the weather for 25 years. Johnny Wood, you keep making those forecasts right, and I'll keep watching you. That's what you got all these fans to watch you for a long time because you've had good forecasts. Now, I want to say one thing to him, that uh, when his weather forecast is wrong, don't blame it on the computer. <laughs> don't oh, I thought you said lucky day. <laughs> I've told John to look at Dave. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think one thing that I, I learned from Johnny and others in the business, you gotta be yourself on, on TV. As we welcome a new member to the Neighborhood Weather Network, and I guess you could say truly my, my weather show has gone to the dogs, but uh, indeed, we've had a wonderful time. They've been treating us so well. Cookies, brownies, pop. You know, people also can relate to you when you're yourself, and you don't take yourself too seriously. I think I, I learned that from Johnny Wood for sure. You gotta have fun, and uh, you gotta also, I think, respect and appreciate the viewers. In our forecast tonight, calling for kind of a cool night with low temperatures from Bristol and Tonacre. Okay, so when I got to the Tri-Cities, I had not met Johnny Wood yet, but immediately I was made aware of Johnny Wood, all right? When I came and, and people, uh, you know, out in the community, you know, neighbors and so forth, realized that I was gonna be working with the Johnny Wood, the, the Johnny Wood, the man, uh, it, was, it was kind of interesting because I was made well aware who was the local legend in the weather here in the Tri-Cities. Cities. And that's everything that's been posted. I started actually as overnight producer for the morning show 
and that's when Johnny was a one-man show, so um, I spent the night gathering news, going out and shooting news, putting together his newscast in the morning. I moved on, I think, to every position in the newsroom that's possible until eventually I ended my career here as morning anchor alongside Mr. Wood. Well, here's Tara. She has a look at our top stories, but first, what about traffic? It was just a relief to know that someone so high profile, um, someone that had such a legacy here was on your side and had your back and wanted to help you grow and was encouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about that? Ball fishing heating up. I have, we had more fun, more laughs, because we have similar senses of humor and we laughed at everything. <laughs> Come on. Elevator fluctuator. We had a lot of fun. The first time I met Johnny Wood was probably around March of 1981. So I walk in the newsroom, and on the left is the legendary anchor Merrill Moore. He didn't even look up, and he's typing with one finger, like hunting peck, pow, 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 pow. And on the right was the legend himself, Johnny Wood. He looked up at me, and he went, hey boy, where are you from? I said, well, Mr. Wood, I'm from North Carolina. There's a little place called Avery County. He went, Avery County? Let me tell you about the time that some dummy tried to kidnap Mildred the Bear, the mascot of Grandfather Mountain. I remember that story. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody kidnapped a bear. Can you believe that? And I think from that moment on, Johnny and I were going to be close buddies because we had that Avery County connection. TV news has changed a lot since then, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's still pictures and people. I mean, pictures and people, it sure, certainly is. I was saying, maybe somebody will see a shot at me and they'll want to hire me. And I want that guy to come work for me. I got to work with Johnny longer than anybody from a standpoint of directing. I directed Johnny Wood for over 25 years, I think, in the morning show. I enjoyed working with Johnny, you know, but as I started working more with him, just to get to know him and the kind of person he was off the air, too, was really, really neat. He became a really good friend. He would always want to know about my kids, my wife, how we were doing. Your term on a robbery conviction. Such a joy to work with him in the studio. And that's when you really got to know the real Johnny. I mean, of course, his on-air persona was true, but it was all those conversations that are for commercial breaks. And I would think about these elevator short conversations that we would have. And they never heard Ray Stevens before. If you didn't work with him downstairs on camera, then you, you were kind of missing out. Hey, we're here. We would spend the morning working, preparing our show, and then when it was time to go downstairs, he'd say, come on, Teresa, let's go play TV. Right. Maybe they'll fill up the potholes. I saw a report there, 59 million of them things in the road right I now. hit every one of them, honestly. Five bucks a The pot weather. Holes. Rainy weather on the way, we hope. Or spring. Well, I worked with Teresa Keller, who's been quite a contribution to the station. I used to work at Barter Theater in public relations, and I would bring actors down to be interviewed on the morning talk show. So that's how I got into television and I had to learn as I went along. And Johnny was such a stickler for the news values. And I learned a lot from Johnny about that because he had been trained and he did know. Thank you for joining us from News Center 5. Good afternoon. So Johnny was fun and he was a little bit of a prankster. Yeah, but what were you doing over here? She and I were working together. I was doing the weather at the time. The uh, computerized technology came along, the computerized weather maps. So the control room was trying to get used to everything. What we're going to show you now is a computerized version, uh, version rather. You know, I told you you messed up words. Let's take a look at the computerized version. <laughs> and as he said it, my name popped up on the screen. I was responsible for this. I tell tell this one on Tony Venable, but he was the director at the time. And, and I guess the control room freaked out, punched a button, and my whole picture came up. Where the frontal system is in that one. Hello, Teresa. Uh, OK, there went our uh, computer there. There we go. We're back with it. She was not aware of being on the air either. That's the worst thing that could happen when you're on the air and don't know that you are. And that blooper made it to NBC national <laughs> program with Dick Clark and his feature on bloopers from people around the country. And they sent Teresa a check for a hundred dollars and I got a check for a hundred dollars for appearing on that show. And they both got paid and I got reprimanded. Then we go into the southeast. Now oh, that's uh, a new one there to show you. I guess uh, Tropical Storm Teresa over there, huh? And in the southeast uh, there's some uh, 
more of the clouds that we've got. So we went to digital high definition. Serving East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia in high definition. And so everybody at that time had to put on makeup, even the men. And Johnny wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> and he's like, will you help me? And I had a compact for a while. I did powder his bald head every morning <laughs> before we went on air. And from then on, you know, we kind of helped him with, I helped him with where, what to shop for, what to buy. And, but it was a, a fun morning and we laughed about it a lot as I was putting makeup on him. <laughs> there it is. Back in the day, I mean, I think it still happens, but there's this thing called National Smokeout Day. And you're supposed to change your batteries in your smoke alarms. But it was also a day when you were encouraged to quit smoking. Today is American Smokeout Day, and the American Cancer Society says that one of seven people who stop smoking for the day will stop for good. In our feature segment today, a family counselor gives suggestions for dealing with an obstinate teenager. I'm Teresa Keller. Join us for News Center 5 at noon. Uh, you're going to have to read. Uh, <laughs> Did you do that in the... I looked, looked through the lens, and there's Johnny on the side picking up a cigarette. His face got so red, we were in the control room just dying. Uh, I don't think that made it on the air. So that was a that was just Johnny for you. That rascal. I look, look upon those moments with fond, fond memories. Well, Johnny Wood is truly a icon of our region and there's so many wonderful memories that we can all think about from having Johnny uh, in the morning and uh, from Johnny's fishing report that we all used to enjoy to the many snow reports you know my kids absolutely had to have Johnny on in the morning when there was a chance of snow or when snow was flying so they could know if they were going to be in school or not and uh, Johnny, thank you a lot for some of those snow reports over the years, too, at Food City. And no, contrary to popular belief, Johnny has never been on Food City's payroll. Johnny, on behalf of our entire team here at Food City, uh, we want to wish you all the best for your future and say thank you for all the memories you made for us over the years. Uh, during this uh, Thanksgiving season, I have a whole lot to be thankful for my my very life. Four years ago, November 12th, four years ago, I faced a rather a heart or threatening situation, a life threatening situation, heart attack, went cardiac bypass surgery, and a really long recovery period. And here's what I've been going through. I had no idea what was happening to me. This one really sneaked up on me. My wife, Mary, drove me to the emergency room after I felt a little bit sick and experienced some tightness in my chest. I came home from work one day and I just didn't feel good. And I told Mary, I said, I think we need to go to the hospital. And then I had the actual heart attack there, I think, the emergency room. When you talk to these people, a lot of times in retrospect, they'll give you the story like, like you do, that, uh, well, I just didn't feel right, or when I exerted myself, I got some tightness, a little short of breath. It was quickly determined that I needed coronary bypass surgery. But before that could get underway, I went into full cardiac arrest, and there were some pretty tense moments there before the defibrillation was successful. They were able to complete a triple bypass operation. But then I woke up a couple of days later, all these tubes out of my chest. I knew what had happened. I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people on earth. I had no idea whatsoever that this was going on until it happened. And quite frankly, I don't remember much of what they uh, what they did to me initially. But uh, it was pretty grim there for a while, from what somebody told me. So, and I didn't realize they had to defibrillate me like seven or eight times, something like that. It was kind of a legend around there. I know that two doctors uh, said they just had a little prayer and decided to try one more time to resuscitate me because they were worried about brain damage, you know. And so here I am. I'm just glad to get out here and get home. No, I have not come back to work. <laughs> But I do feel pretty good and just came in today and to see all my friends here mainly and uh, try to catch up on all this email and I'm still just overwhelmed with everybody's thoughts and, and prayers and everything and uh, God answered it I guess.
I really, uh, really liked what I did and I miss it. But as I tell everybody, I don't miss getting up at three o'clock in the morning to go have to do it. This is gonna be tough. Well, this morning, um, I'm announcing my upcoming retirement. I officially uh, be retiring from WCYB TV. My alarm clock and I, I'm gonna be off the job come New Year's Day. WCYB News has been a huge part of my life since March of 1968. Well, I turned 70 years old. And I said, if I want to do anything, now's the time. You know, I mean, 65 is a normal retirement time, I guess. I just made that decision that when I reached 70, it was time. So what about the future? Well, for me, that means sleeping late and doing what I want to do. Well, I better be realistic here, doing what Mary was going to let me to do. And what about good old News 5 WCYB today? Well, I'm very happy to announce a secret that I've been keeping for the last <laughs> several weeks. Our own Preston Ayers is going to, have to learn how to be an early bird here. Preston, I, I'd give you my alarm clock, but I'm going to lead, need it for a few more weeks. Absolutely. Uh, so I cannot tell you how happy I am to tell you about Preston. I've always asked questions. I've always wanted to know why something is, how something works. I've always wanted to know the story behind the story, what's happening in our region, and, and being able to then tell that to the viewer and to let them know what's happening in their world and our world. It's all our community and what's happening around us. With signs like this one and others posted around town, it's hard not to know about the water shortage. That's what led me here since I was 12 years old is what I wanted to do. It's been the career I thought it would be, and I've got to do a lot of fun and exciting things I never thought I would get to do. I heard that Preston Ayers once said he wants to be the next Johnny Wood. I think when I said I wanted to be the next Johnny Wood, it was that I wanted to have the loyal viewers that people could turn to and watch and know that when Preston Ayers was on in the morning, that it was something that, that would be informative of their day. It was something that they could trust and count on and depend on. There's no replacing Johnny. I never tried to replace Johnny, never wanted to replace Johnny, and I'll never, never be Johnny. But having the respect that the viewers had for Johnny, I hope that someday they can have the same respect for what we put on the air in the morning and that have the trust in knowing that it is something that is valuable to their life. I remember the Paramount was fully packed to the brim with people. There was not room to add another person in that room. And it was kind of this uh, excited feel because, you know, the aura of Johnny, because he'd been on TV for so long, was kind of uh, like you were about to see a celebrity. So it was kind of like, it felt like it was, I, I don't want to elevate TV to the greatest thing ever, but it feels like, it felt like a historic moment that you were getting to, to witness something that was of importance. God has truly blessed me through all of these years, and I hope God blesses you as much as he has blessed me. Thank you. There was a 44-year chunk out of my life there at, at WCYB, and I enjoyed it very much. Uh, the bosses knew that uh, we all liked doing that kind of work, so they didn't pay us too well. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that's one of the downsides, I guess, if there was one. And I think that about wraps it up. I'm slap out of time, as I say. Do I intro the Today Show, or do you? You could just say farewell. Okay. Thank you all very much. God bless you all. Well, you know, I first met Joe... Wolf, Joe, at one of our lunch with Johnny's that we had up in Clintwood, Virginia. And, and the whole town turned out. The judge came by. I got acquainted with Joe and found out what kind of a, just a basic down-to-earth guy he is. I mean, uh, sure, he's a lawyer, a very smart lawyer, too, I might add. But uh, he didn't necessarily wear the lawyer's suits, if you know what I mean. And uh, I'm glad to see he's still out there practicing because folks in Dickinson and Wise Counties need him.
Thanks for joining us on News 5 at noon. I'm Preston Ayers. And the door never opened. Bottom left, mudslides. We'll keep you updated on air and online. Our top story this morning. News media nowadays uh, is looked down upon. Journalism is lowered uh, and is a lower priority for a good journalism, I guess, what I'm trying to say is a lower priority for the news watcher than it was just a few years ago. We begin tonight with breaking news. I'm excited for what's to come. And as you mentioned, this investigation is something that every newscaster, every person that sits behind an anchor desk should strive to have is that connection that he had with his viewers. They trusted him, they felt like they knew him, they felt like he was a family member. I don't think news reporters are trusted as much as they were before or anything else. But again, the, the old rules that we abided by still apply today. You know, the, anything at all controversial, you want more than one source, preferably about three. Those standards just seemed like clear as a bell at the time. And now in this world, you see people who slant information and actually present misinformation or flat out lie. The trust, especially these days, is extraordinarily important. That's the the whole deal. If people don't trust you, they're not going to watch it. There's no point without the, the trust aspect, especially in a time where folks distrust so much. Being factual and unbiased is the biggest part of this job. The facts matter. At News 5, we find reliable sources to deliver accurate information. Because the facts matter. I mean, the local newscasters, I'm sure, are still as committed to that responsibility as possible. I think sometimes it's harder. The search continues tonight for a man accused of shooting two sheriff's deputies. I think I do feel obligation and responsibility. If I didn't, I don't think I would do it. I think that's still a standard that you find in network journalism, and you also find it in local news. News Center 5 has been a presentation of WCYB TV 5 News and Public Affairs Department. I hate that that's happened to journalism. It used to be buoyant. You were looked uh, upon very highly, and that's not the case anymore. What he was trying to do is the very same thing that we're trying to do today. My daddy told me, you know, your reputation is the most important thing that you have. And in this business, uh, a reputation of being reliable and accurate is the only thing you have, credibility. And it's hard to achieve and very easy to lose. So you, you really have to be careful uh, before you put something on the air. Make sure it's right. I think if you are real with the viewer and you provide them with a, a, a product, a, a television show, a newscast that is relevant to them, informative to them, the viewer will watch. You are important to them and have a reason to be there. You, you still have to trust people. I guess the Bible teaches that, you know, the old song, trust and obey. Severe weather hits hard in our area. Several homes are damaged. One or two were destroyed. And News Center 5's complete coverage gave you early warning so you could get ready. We'll put the severe threat tracker in severe mode. News Center 5 followed the storm and kept you informed every step of the way. But we took a police escort through the hardest hit area. When your family's safety is at stake, rely on the station committed to giving you accurate details throughout the storm. Complete severe weather coverage only on News Center 5. Our region's communities are linked by our accomplishments, our challenges, our hopes and dreams. More of you watch News 5 WCYB than any other source. This is not a coincidence. Since 1956, we have been your news station, capturing the images, getting the facts, telling the stories. And now, News 5 and WCYB.com give you more information in more ways when you want it. On air, online, and on mobile. Getting the facts. News 5 WCYB. Okay, and tell me just a little bit, what do you remember about Johnny Wood? Oh, Lordy. It's really sad he's not there anymore, but uh, he's ever, he's printed into my memory. I just remember how professional he was. I remember uh, how he was always so precise and just an absolutely wonderful man. I know he loved the fish, and he's always on TV every morning. I loved him. I mean, I really do miss him on there. My wife taught school in Sullivan County for 
30 some years and she has quite a following too of, of her students. She taught in elementary school and we'd be at a restaurant somewhere and I'd see somebody coming over to our table and I would look at Mary and I said, is that one of yours or one of mine? <laughs> Johnny seemed like a good man. He, he was good and he was good and kind to people too. And it looked like he was really blessed. He was just super lighthearted. Uh, it kind of reminded me of my papa. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just really cool to, to watch him on TV. We would turn on the TV just to watch Johnny. Johnny was their person to watch. I think a lot of him. And um, we missed him too, you know, when he left and all that. Do you think he was, um, you know, like a staple in the community? Oh, yes, he was. Definitely. Anything else you want to add about him? No, I miss him. <laughs> Love to see him again. You know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in the Tri-Cities, do as Johnny Wood does. <laughs>of the station. You'd have uh, school kids coming in. Well, Johnny would be at his ass either going over the news or, or he might be eating lunch and they would bring these tours in and as soon as those kids would open the door or come through the hallway they'd see Johnny there and they'd all holler out Johnny! Johnny! And then Johnny would take time and all those kids would crowd around his desk all asking him questions but Johnny would take time. He'd sign autographs, he would take pictures with them but Johnny would take the time and it just showed you how personal and how caring he was about the people. Well I guess when you find something you love to do you kind of immerse yourself in it. And this story is about a young man, a 14-year-old, who wants to be on television. Tell you what, he's pretty good. Welcome to the studio of WKID News. Well, I grew up in a home where you knew what time it was based upon which anchor was on at that time. And we watched pretty much every newscast. And my uh, mom always put a big importance on knowing what's happening around you. I bought a, a $20 camera out of the classifieds and shot news at home, eventually did it digital. One thing's for sure, he's all about his career down the road. And another thing Caleb has down pat is the head turn that <laughs> they taught us years ago. <laughs> I had emailed him afterward um, saying, thank you for the compliment. And he says, I'm very impressed with your work. Keep it up. I feel like that, that story that Jim did is part of what got my foot in the door. And so it feels like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Johnny. We begin with Johnny Wood, a television institution in the Tri-Cities market at WCYB for more than 40 years. He invited me to be part of his entourage when he went to Nashville to achieve or to get his Lifetime Achievement Award for the impact that he'd had on broadcasting. And I was so proud to be there with him and so happy for him. Congratulations to News 5 WCYB's Johnny Wood for receiving the Silver Circle Award. I was kind of strutting around internally, you know, hey, I won an Emmy, you know. I would like to thank everybody that I've worked with and am now working with and all of those owners and managers and everybody else that I've worked for over the years. The Silver Saucer, as a fishing buddy of mine calls it. <laughs> Hey, congratulations on getting that silver saucer, Johnny. And he kind of brought me back down to earth. Well, thank you all very much. I was walking through the newsroom the day that they were going to present a sign outside in his honor from the city mayor and some dignitaries and people. Tara. Taylor and I were working together then. He says, you need to come out and shoot a promo. And I says, you know, I uttered a little oath and says, you know, I'm leaving in four weeks. What, what do they want to do a promo for it? And I just thought it was hilarious because of course I was in on, I knew what they were, what, what was going to happen. So we walked outside and he immediately knew it was, something was going on because these, the mayor and different people were out there, a group of us from the station. I thought, what in the world is going on, you know? And so they had this unveiling of the sign and it was just a really neat moment. I was very 
honor to be a, a part of. And Johnny was blown away. I mean, my memory of it was he's standing there looking up at that sign, the Johnny Wood Plaza sign, and he just kept saying, wow. They really surprised me with that. I've gotten a few awards here recently, and they're on the wall at home. This is out here in front of everybody. When it's your hometown, it really, really, really means a lot. Johnny was more than a co-worker. He was a mentor. He was a friend. I know he comes off as this kind of a laughable character, almost a cartoon character. Don't be fooled. Johnny Wood is one smart cookie. He was always just a voice of reason as well. There will never be another Johnny Wood. Johnny was a one of a kind. He really was. It's just, it was a blessing and an honor to work with him. It was fun, educational, and an absolute honor to work with Johnny Wood. I think back to what the advice I got is be yourself. It's the easiest person on earth you can be. Hear the smoky voice of the mountains coming home to family. It's our heritage, our neighbors, and a home to you and me experience. This is Steve Taylor speaking for the staff and management of WCYV-TV, wishing you a very pleasant good night and good morning.